My dearly beloved in Christ, as you know, today we begin the season of Advent. And if we look at the liturgical year, we find that there are two, two primary feasts around which the various seasons of the year uh, cluster or, or are gathered around these two seasons, Christmas and Easter. And each of these two great feast days has a period of preparation, a period of celebration, and then a period of thanksgiving and application. And in each case, the color violet is for the period of preparation. For Christmas, we have Advent as the preparation, and of course, for Easter, we have Lent. And then there's the time of celebration, Christmas tide, and then Easter tide in the Easter season, and then we have the color of white. And then after the conclusion of the period of celebration, we have the time after Epiphany, following the Christmas season, and then the time after Pentecost, following the Easter season, and the color of the vestments on Sunday is green. So it's a beautiful uh, harmony and arrangement by Holy Mother Church for these liturgical seasons. So now we begin today a new liturgical year, and it is the season of preparation for Christmas, the time of Advent. Interestingly, if we go back many centuries, as you can read in a book such as The Liturgical Year by Father Geringer, Abbot Geringer, there actually was a 40-day period of preparation for Christmas, just like we have for Lent. And in fact, it began on the Feast of St. Martin of Tours and was referred to as St. Martin's Lent. But now we have four weeks, or at least four Sundays, and a time of between three and four weeks. And these four Sundays symbolize for us that long period of waiting, yearning for the coming of the Messiah into the world that we believe is, was probably around 4,000 years. From the creation and then the fall of Adam and Eve up until the coming of the Redeemer. And so, of course, the logical question is, why did God wait so long? Why did he make the world wait so long before he fulfilled his promise and sent the Redeemer. And spiritual writers tell us that it was to make the world understand its need for the Redeemer, to make us yearn for and desire more our divine Lord, because we are utterly helpless without him. And so imagine during this season of Advent what it was like to live in the Old Testament, which was a time of fear, a time when there was no Mass and Holy Communion and the sacraments, a time when the chosen people were surrounded by pagan nations, where there was idolatry, etc., and how much the world needed our Divine Lord. During Advent, the very name of which means coming, our focus is on preparing to celebrate the coming of our Lord into the world, to celebrate Christmas. And so we prepare for that wonderful feast day. But let us reflect upon other comings of our Lord. And the spiritual writers tell us that there is a threefold coming. The first coming of Jesus Christ was in weakness, in humiliation, in poverty, when he was born in the stable. The second coming of our Lord is when he comes into each individual soul. And that coming is going on today and has been going on throughout the centuries since our Lord's birth. In fact, every time we receive our Lord in Holy Communion, he comes into our hearts. So that we could say is the second coming. And then the third coming will be on the last day, as we reflected upon especially last Sunday, the end of the world, the coming of our Lord with great majesty and might and power to judge all mankind. I'd like to read a short section 
from a spiritual writer, a sermon of Peter of Blois on this threefold coming. There are three comings of our Lord, the first in the flesh, the second in the soul, the third at the judgment. The first was at midnight, according to those words of the gospel. At midnight there was a cry made, Lo, the bridegroom cometh. But this first coming is long since past, for Christ has been seen on the earth and has conversed among men. We are now in the second coming, provided only we are such as that he may thus come to us. For he has said that if we love him, he will come unto us and will take up his abode with us. So that the second coming is full of uncertainty to us. For who, save the Spirit of God, knows them that are of God? They that are raised out of themselves by the desire of heavenly things know indeed when he comes. But whence he cometh, or whither he goeth, they know not. As for the third coming, it is most certain that it will be, but most uncertain when it will be. For nothing is more sure than death, and nothing less sure than the hour of death. When they shall say, Peace and security, says the Apostle, then shall sudden destruction come upon them, as the pains upon her that is with child, and they shall not escape. So that the first coming was humble and hidden, the second is mysterious and full of love, and the third will be majestic and terrible. In his first coming, Christ was judged by men unjustly, in his second, he renders us just by his grace. In his third, he will judge all things with justice. In his first coming, he was a lamb. In his last, a lion. In the one in between the two, the tenderest of friends. So I thought this was a very interesting explanation of this threefold coming. So again, Advent is all about the coming of our Lord. And we should reflect during Advent on why the Son of God came into the world to redeem us because of the sin of Adam and Eve and the fallen state of the world and the impossibility of getting to heaven until we had been redeemed and that that debt was paid to Almighty God in atonement for the sin of Adam and Eve. And how our Lord came into the world and humbled himself and became man, took to himself a human nature, was born in the stable and suffered throughout his life and eventually died on the cross for us. The incarnation is a mystery and it is a mystery of love, the love of God for us. So let us prepare well during Advent for Christmas. People in the world have no concept of the importance of preparing in a spiritual way for Christmas. There is all the celebration, all of the shopping, and the distractions, and the parties, and the premature listening to Christmas music, and celebrating at a time when we should be preparing. Preparing in a penitential way, which is the, what the liturgy of the church suggests to us by the violet color, the elimination of the beautiful Gloria from the Mass on the Sundays of Advent, the, the fasting days that we have, the vigils of Christmas and the Immaculate Conception, and then the Ember Days, it is a time of penance and sacrifice. So make sure that you are performing sacrifices during this season. Give up something like you would during Lent so that your Christmas will be a time of spiritual blessedness. And it won't be what it is for so many worldlings who celebrate during Advent and when Christmas comes they're tired of it. They can't wait, wait to get rid of the tree at a time when they should be beginning to celebrate in a joyful way the coming of our Lord into the world. So during Advent, let us perform some sacrifice, some penance, 
Let us make certain that we spend some extra time in prayer and meditation, and especially thinking about the love of God that would bring him down into this world to redeem us. Where would we be had our Lord not come into this world for love of us? Let us be grateful for that love, and let us show our gratitude and our appreciation by our sacrificial preparation for his birth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.